Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In the studio with me right now, I have the Infinity Book 14 by Tuxedo Computers. It's in the studio, and I'm going to review it in this video. The Infinity Book 14 is a 14 inch notebook. It claims to have 12 hours of battery life, a very bright screen, and fast performance. In this video, I'm going to give you guys a full review of the Infinity Book Pro 14 and let you guys know whether or not I can recommend this to you if you are in the market for a new computer. In addition, we're also going to check out the new version of Tuxedo OS in its current form, which actually features the Plasma desktop rather than the Budgie desktop like the project used to ship in the past. It's not a final version of Tuxedo OS, but we're getting a quick preview in this video which is going to be a fun added bonus. Now, before we get into the actual review, I want to give you guys a quick disclaimer first. As always, I retain full creative control over all of the videos on my channel. This means that even though Tuxedo did in fact send this model over to me for the purposes of this review, they were not allowed to screen this video before you guys, and they had no input on the content of this video at all. So without any further hesitation, Let's dive into my review of the Infinity Book Pro 14. First, let's talk about the overall build quality. This particular notebook is a bit on the lighter side. It has a little bit of heft to it, but it's not anywhere near heavy, so I don't think anybody is going to have any problem whatsoever traveling with this particular model. The build quality itself feels very solid. For example, the palm rest doesn't flex at all, the hinges feel sturdy, and overall, I have no complaints about the chassis in any way. I would actually rate the build quality as being very close to something like Lenovo, because Lenovo, in the past at least, has always set the standard for build quality, and when it comes to this particular model, I think it's actually pretty close, if not equal. When it comes to ports, on the left-hand side, we have a USB Type-C port equipped with USB 3.2, and that port actually supports display capability, and that's going to allow you to plug in something like a docking station. In addition, the USB Type-C port on the left-hand side also supports power delivery, which means you can actually bypass the included charger altogether and just use something like the power delivery capabilities of a USB-C dock to charge the computer. So effectively, you can have a situation where you can plug in one cable, and that'll plug in your display, your charger, keyboard, and mouse, converting your computer into a complete desktop when you're at your office. Also on the left-hand side, we have a standard USB Type-A port that also features USB 3.2, an SD card reader, as well as a 2-in-1 audio jack. On the right-hand side, we have another USB-C port, but this one carries Thunderbolt 4 as well, which is pretty cool. Also on the right side, we have yet another USB Type-A port, and like the one on the left, this one also supports USB 3.2, we also have an HDMI 2.0 port and a barrel connector for the included AC adapter. One thing that's missing here though is an ethernet jack. And that's something that I usually like to see on notebooks when I can. However, most manufacturers are actually focused on making their notebooks thin and light. And the thinner they get, the harder it gets to include an ethernet jack. To that end, Tuxedo has actually included a USB adapter for ethernet in the box so that way you can still benefit from Ethernet if that's something that you want to use. So I think that's a good compromise for keeping the notebook thin and also giving you the ability to use Ethernet if you need to. But you know what? We need to talk about the display. It's great. When I first took the notebook out of the box, I was actually second guessing myself that I read from the spec sheet that it has a 14 inch display. The notebook is a bit on the smaller side. It's very portable. So I was actually thinking that it was a 12 inch display, but no, I didn't read it wrong. This particular model features a 14 inch display, but the bezels are so small that it actually gives it the illusion that the notebook is much smaller than it actually is. In fact, this might actually be the smallest 14 inch notebook that I've ever reviewed on the channel. If you were to order this particular model for yourself, there's actually two display options that you can choose between. 
In particular, they have a 2K version and a 3K version. The unit that I was sent actually featured their 3K screen, and on this notebook, the aspect ratio is actually 16 by 10, and for the 3K version itself, the resolution is 2880 by 1800. But where this screen really shines, literally, is how bright it is. With the brightness turned all the way up, it's easily the brightest notebook of any that I've ever had in the studio. And it's absolutely the brightest display that I've ever reviewed on this channel. But the brightness isn't the only thing that's awesome about this display though. The pixel density is really good. The product page on their site brags that you won't be able to see the pixels in the display, and they're right, it's very crisp. In the past, I've had issues with 3K screens when it comes to scaling. Notebooks that I've checked out previously with this resolution would either have the scaling set too high or too low, meaning that objects on the screen would either be too big or too small, but for the most part, scaling wasn't an issue at all. I'll talk more about the default settings when I get to the OS section of this review. But all in all, when it comes to the screen, I think this is probably the best display that I've seen from any of the notebooks that I've reviewed in the past. Now, let's talk about the keyboard. The keyboard on this model has a very nice tactile feel, and the key travel is adequate. On a personal note, this model is only available with a NISO keyboard, though. I know that's not a problem for those of you that are used to that particular keyboard style, but I'm more accustomed to the ANSI style on my end. Due to that, I did have some issues typing on the keyboard, but that's only because of my personal preference for ANSI keyboards. There's nothing actually wrong with this keyboard at all. In fact, I think it's a really good keyboard. As an aside, if you do plan on ordering a tuxedo notebook, make sure you order yours with your preferred style of keyboard. This particular model is only available with ISO keyboards like I mentioned, but many of their models actually offer you the ability to choose between the two keyboard styles. But if in doubt, just send them an email before you purchase one and they'll be able to help you make the right decision. Next, let's check out the touchpad. This notebook actually features a glass touchpad, and my fingers just glide over the top of it. It feels very comfortable. And I also like the size. It's a little on the larger side, which is pretty cool. That's actually my preference. And I also like the fact that you can double tap on the upper left-hand corner to disable the touchpad, which is great for those of you that plan on using an external mouse when you're not on the go. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to test out mouse gestures during the time that I've had this unit in the studio, but more on that later. But mouse gestures aside, I think it's a very solid touchpad, and I like it quite a bit. Now, let's talk about specs. This particular model features Intel Core processors, and specifically, you can order it with either the Intel Core i5-1135G7 or the i7-1165G7. The model that they sent to me was equipped with the Core i7-1165G7, and that CPU has four cores with eight threads, and a clock speed that maxes out at 4.7 GHz. By comparison, the i5 model maxes out at 4.2 GHz, and it also has 4 cores with 8 threads. The i7 CPU that's available has a cache of 12 MB, and the i5 version has a cache of 8 MB. So with the i7 option, you can expect a decent improvement in speed, although it's probably not a massive difference. Memory maxes out on this model at 64 GB, and my review unit was built with 16 gigabytes. The type of RAM that this model uses is 3200 MHz DDR4, and it keeps up with me quite nicely. When it comes to performance, I'm very satisfied by the performance of this machine. In fact, it's actually impressive. This model boots up to the login screen in somewhere between 10 and 12 seconds. Of course, keep in mind, this version of Tuxedo OS is still in development, so that could change. But perhaps even more impressive, the Plasma desktop was fully loaded and ready to go in somewhere around two seconds after I typed in my password. That's pretty fast. The review unit was equipped with a Samsung 980 SSD, which actually has some decent specs. So that combined with the i7 CPU probably explains the performance that I was seeing. I have no complaints about the performance at all. It keeps up with me, and I think that's all I can ask for. Now, when it comes to the onboard speakers, they're pretty decent actually. There's not much bass with the speakers, but they don't come across as having too much treble either. I watched a music video by Lacuna Coil to test out music and I cranked the volume all the way up and it didn't rattle at all, which is great. 
When I was listening to pure vocals, such as a YouTube video with no background music, the quality seemed like a bit of a step down compared to when listening to music, but it was still decent. Overall, I'd give the sound quality of this notebook a score of 7 out of 10 if I had to put a number on it. Is it the best? Well, no, but is it the worst? Absolutely not. The audio quality is adequate and it gets the job done. In regards to the fan, the fan curve is definitely acceptable. I did hear the fan a few times, but it wasn't off-putting at all. Most of the time, the fan was actually silent. The only time it seemed to come on was when a background task was running that was a little bit on the intensive side. But overall, I have no complaints on the fan noise at all. The Tuxedo Control Center is present in this build of Tuxedo OS, and that app allows you to control things like the CPU speed and the fan curve and things like that. So even if the fan did bother you at some point, you actually have the ability to adjust the profile to suit your desired level of noise. However, I didn't feel the need to change it at all. Reason being, the fan was reasonable and it never got in my way. Now let's talk about Tuxedo OS. Tuxedo OS is the default distribution when you order a Tuxedo laptop. They have other options available. They support things like Ubuntu, for example. And Tuxedo OS itself is actually built on Ubuntu's base. Until now, Tuxedo OS has featured the Budgie desktop. As for me, I like the Budgie desktop, but to be honest, it's not my favorite. I'm actually a GNOME person for the most part, but I can still appreciate other desktop environments. Budgie came across as effective, but it didn't seem to stand out for me at all. The build of Tuxedo OS on this particular model that I was sent, like I mentioned earlier, was actually sent with the in-progress build of Tuxedo OS with the Plasma desktop. My understanding is that the Plasma build of Tuxedo OS is not final yet, it's developing, but it was a lot of fun to check it out. When I first powered on the computer, I wasn't shown a setup screen or anything like that. It already had a user created for me with my name. That was probably done at Tuxedo's office before shipping it to me. I assume that when the final version of the Plasma build of Tuxedo OS is released, that it'll show some sort of welcome screen when you start up the computer for the first time that'll allow you to set your own username and password. The Plasma implementation in Tuxedo OS is very effective. It doesn't really stand out in any way beyond the unique aspects of Plasma itself, but I didn't get the impression that it was trying to stand out. They customized the wallpaper, the default colors, and so on, and they've already ported the Tuxedo Control Center over to the Plasma build, which is pretty cool, and the Tuxedo Control Center itself was available in the Budgie edition, and it's something that I featured in every review of Tuxedo's notebooks so far because they do such a great job. I feel like it sets the standard when it comes to allowing the user full control over their hardware, especially on Linux notebooks. It's a great piece of software. But what I really liked about the Plasma implementation is how great it looked. With the bright screen that this model has, the Plasma desktop just looks beautiful. The colors just pop. The pixel density works surprisingly well. And when it comes to scaling, Tuxedo didn't actually enlarge anything in Plasma at all. I was expecting to see a 125% or perhaps a 150% increase in scaling, but the fact that Tuxedo didn't need to adjust the default scaling at all and the screen was still easy for me to read, that was a pleasant surprise. Their Plasma implementation paired with this beautiful screen is just overall a win. However, I do see a few areas that Tuxedo OS could improve in. First of all, this particular build of Tuxedo OS doesn't feature mouse gestures. At least for me, I wasn't able to get any mouse gestures to work. And I think that's an absolute shame because when you have a touchpad that's as great as the one that's included on this model, you actually should be able to benefit from gestures. So I would definitely suggest to their developers to consider implementing something like TouchEgg if they can to provide gesture support. Another thing that I didn't like so much is that their offerings of Linux distributions are limited specifically to LTS versions. Now for the most part, that's actually not completely a bad thing. I always recommend LTS releases for pretty much everyone. On my end, I just don't really see very many use cases anymore for non-LTS versions of Ubuntu. But considering that they only offer LTS versions of Ubuntu, and their Tuxedo OS distribution is also built on LTS Ubuntu, 
I think that does limit some people out there that need to develop software, for example, for the next generation of Linux. Although I don't really feel that non-LTS versions of Ubuntu are as important nowadays as they used to be in the past, it is a valid use case that developers do need a reference distribution to develop the next generation of technologies on, but again, it's not really that big of a deal, especially considering that there's nothing technically stopping you from installing whatever version of Ubuntu or other distribution that you want on this model. The only thing that you might run into if you go outside of their supported distribution space is that the Tuxedo Control Center, you may or may not be able to get that to work. But again, there's nothing stopping you from giving it a try. Now let's talk about pricing. The base model Infinity Book Pro 14 starts at around $1,200 US dollars after conversion. The review unit that I received would cost around $1,700 US dollars after conversion as configured. As an aside, when I review notebooks in this particular price point, some people within my audience get a little upset over the cost. But the truth is, it's not actually more expensive than comparable Windows PCs from companies such as Lenovo. In fact, this model is actually a little bit cheaper. Since the Infinity Book is a business class notebook, you have to compare apples to apples and compare it against competing machines in the same category. A matching Lenovo T14 or X1 Carbon with a similar configuration will cost you a bit more than $1,900 US dollars. So you're actually saving a bit of money by going with a Linux notebook. Generally, I seem to find that there's a cost variance between $100 and $200 most of the time when you compare notebooks from other manufacturers against a Linux machine. And I know that the prices of business class machines are a bit on the higher end, but what you're paying for is a better build quality and they just seem to last longer. Overall, I really enjoyed the time that I spent with the Infinity Book Pro 14. It's a great notebook. Just keep in mind that if you have a preference for the style of keyboard, that this particular model supports the preference that you have. Again, ANSI keyboards are not available on this model. Other models from Tuxedo, they do support that. So just check the build page. And if in doubt, you can send them an email. And that's just a personal thing. I know a lot of you out there are probably fine with ISO keyboards. It's just something to consider if you are going to make a purchase for yourself. But anyway, I really appreciate you guys checking out this video. I hope you found this review helpful, and I'll see you next time.